Welcome to this Archivematica 1.8 screencast, where I'll be showing you Archivematica's new integration with Dataverse, an open source repository for research data. The Archivematica Dataverse integration allows users to preserve research data captured in Dataverse, either by setting up the Dataverse repository as a transfer source location in Archivematica, or by exporting Dataverses and making them available for upload into Archivematica. Today we'll look at setting up the Dataverse integration, the Dataverse transfer type and Dataverse specific microservices, and the Dataverse METS file that is generated by Archivematica. Before we begin, a big thank you to Scholars Portal, the service arm of the Ontario Council of University Libraries for sponsoring the Dataverse integration. The Archivematica documentation contains extensive information on the Dataverse integration. For more information, head to archivematica.org, select the 1.8 documentation, and search for Dataverse. There are two ways to set up the Dataverse integration. It's possible to download material from a Dataverse repository and then make it available in a pre-existing transfer source location that your Archivematica instance can access, such as an SFTP folder. However, the preferred method is to set up Dataverse itself as a transfer source for Archivematica. This means that Archivematica can automatically pick up Dataverses from the repository with no need to download the materials first, which is very helpful for large and complicated datasets. This is the method that we'll be looking at today. The transfer source location needs to be configured by an Archivematica administrator through the storage service for the Archivematica pipeline. Information about creating a Dataverse space and transfer source location in the Archivematica storage service is available in the Archivematica storage service documentation at archivematica.org. Here we can see that the Dataverse repository has been added as a space within the storage service, and that space has one location associated with it, a transfer source location that queries the Dataverse API for the Archivematica Dataverse. This is our Dataverse test repository, which is populated by collections that we've created for testing this integration. We'll be using this first collection, a study of my afternoon snacks, for the demo today. If we click into the collection, you can see that this collection contains some tabular data as well as some text files about cake. Once the Dataverse repository is connected to Archivematica, it will be available in the Transfer Source Location dropdown in the Transfer tab, which is accessed by clicking on the Browse menu. If we open this dropdown, we can see that our Dataverse repository has been connected as a transfer source location. And when we choose the Dataverse repository, we can see the same Dataverses are available to us here in Archivematica. So let's start a Dataverse transfer. The first thing we need to do is set the transfer type to Dataverse. Then we can give our transfer a name. Now we can select our content. So we'll select that same um, content that we just looked at in Dataverse and click the Add button. And now we're ready to start our transfer. It will take a couple of seconds to initialize. Uh, for this transfer, I've set up a very automated processing configuration so that we won't be prompted to make any decisions during this process, which would just slow us down. For more about processing configuration improvements in the Archivematica 1.8 release, please sure, be sure to check out our screencast on UI enhancements. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below. So now that our transfer is running, let's take a look at some of the Dataverse specific microservices and jobs that are kicked off by this transfer type. During Verify Transfer Compliance, which is one of the first microservices that runs during this transfer type, um, we can see that Archivematica has prepared the pipeline to handle a Dataverse transfer by setting flags and also parsing the structure of the Dataverse materials. Archivematica takes information provided as part of the Dataverse itself and converts it to a special Dataverse METS file. At Parse External Files, near the top here, 
Archivematica is using the Dataverse METS file created earlier to do some validation on the materials and to populate the transfer database. We'll look at the Dataverse METS file in a minute. Every other microservice and job within Archivematica runs the same as usual. So for this transfer, the processing config, as I mentioned, was set to normalize, uh, was, was set to skip most of the decision points. And if we go to the ingest tab, we can see that file normalization has occurred as usual. We've normalized these files for preservation. And our ape has now been stored. So uh, while we were discussing the um, the data for specific microservices, our ape has gone from, um, from existing in Dataverse to being stored as an ape in our chosen storage system. So now that our ape is stored, we can go into archival storage, see that our ape is here. We can download the ape um, so that we can look at the METS file. So our APE has been downloaded and extracted, and in the APE you can see our standard bag files and manifests, the standard bag um, data that comes with all our Hivmatica APEs. If we move into the objects directory, you can see we have logs. In the objects folder, we have um, our actual data. This is the tabular data, um, bib files, XML files, uh, everything that came with the export from Dataverse. And if we look back in the data directory, we can see that there is the standard Archivematica METS file. However, Archivematica also creates a second METS file for Dataverse transfers. It's located in this metadata directory within objects. The Dataverse METS contains descriptive metadata about the data set mapped to DDI, the Data Document Initiative Standard, which is a standard specifically intended for research data. Also in the METS file is a file section or METS file sec. We just search for that. That lists all of the files in the APE grouped by type. We can see that there are original files, uh, here, that there are metadata files, and that there are derivatives. The METS also contains a logical struct map, uh, logical structural map or METS struct map, which we can search for, that shows the organization of the files as they existed in Dataverse. If you'd like to learn more about the Dataverse integration, there's a link in the description below to a much more detailed webinar on the topic made while we were working on development of the feature. Thank you so much for watching. For more information about Archivematica, you can always head to archivematica.org for documentation, news, and information about what the Archivematica community is up to.